Alex Pendenko is much more comfortable at his computer than at the driving range. But in 2010, the Ukrainian-born software architect was tinkering with a do-it-yourself drone kit and wondered whether he could use it to track motion in sports. He had never played golf, but thought the game would work best. This is the only sport where the ball doesn't move. It's also the only sport where you aim and you stand there for a little bit, and then when you hit it, you're hitting the same spot you were aiming at. And that, that helps a lot from, a, from an algorithmic standpoint, so it, it helps uh, with error correction and things of that nature. That was the birth of SwingBite, a real-time swing analyzer that weighs less than an ounce and attaches to the shaft of a golf club. It transmits data like swing speed and plane in the club's path from any angle to your smartphone or tablet using Bluetooth technology. Pedenko took his idea with him to the University of Chicago where he enrolled in the Booth School of Business. During orientation, he met former professional golfer Brian Payne, who helped him test a prototype. They also hooked up with Nathan Wykovich, a regular golfer and former product manager at Granger. They entered SwingBite into Booth's new venture challenge last year, where they placed third and impressed faculty like Scott Meadow and Waverly Deutsch. It was so nice to get a product, a physical piece of equipment with real interesting technology behind it. Most of our students don't have the, the technical capabilities to actually build a product. When looking for seed funding, SwingBite also attracted the attention and investment of Nick Kokonis, co-owner of acclaimed restaurants Alinea and Next, and also an avid golfer. Kokonis gets two or three pitches a week from startups, but had until now not invested in another company for seven years. I went to one of the video bays where they had the industry standard $20,000 unit just to see how the data lined up, and it was within a couple percent, you know and it was cons internally consistent. So when I saw that, and I, I have something that's $150 as opposed to something that's 20,000, and my data is the same on my club head speed, I know he did his math right. And they did an amazing job. When I met with them the first time, I didn't remotely expect that. It's just rare that you see a business plan that works. <laughs> so this is Swing Bite. I've only played golf once before, so I tried Swing Bite to see if it could help me improve my swing. Well, Pretty good. get it up in the air. So close. Not gonna happen. It's so look, not happen. it wasn't as wide or as narrow as it should be. We want you know greater differential okay. there. So there it is. What makes SwingBite different from many other local technology startups? The added challenge of manufacturing the physical product. You don't want to tie up too much capital and too much inventory, but you also want to be short on inventory, and you have no idea whether the thing's going to spike up or spike down. So far, it's been okay. We've done a pretty good job of keeping inventory on hand just enough to satisfy our customers. SwingBite's biggest customer, AT&T, which is selling the device in more than 1,300 of its stores nationwide where it retails for $149. SwingBite has about a million dollars in total sales committed so far, and unlike many other startups, is profitable, according to Padenko. SwingBite's hardware is as simple as it can be, mainly because they make it in China and fear it will be copied. All the complexity is in the app and the math, which stymied Padenko at one point. So he used his Russian connections and found help from a team of PhDs who designed guidance systems for missiles. A lot of time went into figuring out the definitions of what is a swing. How difficult was that? Uh, two years. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the math side of this is two years in the making, two and a half years at this point. And so that's just constant improvement. And we're still making changes. We're still improving things. And that's one of the benefits of how we do it. Whenever we make a change, we don't have to send you a new device. Padenko and company plan a second round of funding, at least a million dollars, to be used partly for marketing swing bite. It won't be easy. Not only are there competitors in their category, but also a vast array of products trying to cash in on golfers' seemingly endless quest to improve their handicaps. And for former pro player Brian Payne, it's the marketing challenge more than the golf that makes Swing Bite a dream job. It's a dream job for someone who, you know, enjoys 
you know, creating something, evangelizing for something, focusing on, you know, the branding and marketing and reaching consumers about a new idea. That's really where my passions lie. We've got some vision beyond golf, and we look forward to, to making that happen as well. This is Lisa Leiter reporting for Crane's Chicago Business.